some people may get pissed off because I'm going to talk to everybody. I'm not playing. And um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a crazy summer. That was Ice Cube telling the world about his plans to expose Dwayne Johnson's true agenda with his most recent appearance in the media. What am I referring to? Listen to this. But, uh, you were approached by a party to maybe run for president, uh, <laughs> run for office. Yeah. How does that feel, by the way? This run for president talk has kind of been in the ether for the past couple of years. Well, here's what Ice Cube has decided to do in the wake of Hollywood coming for the entire country. What am I going to do to deal with these fucking gatekeepers? Well, what I'm going to do is go on a gatekeepers podcast tour. Although most people in the entertainment industry are usually tied to one show or movie through most of their careers, Ice Cube seems to be the exception, as he's not just known for his success in blockbuster films like Ride Along and Xander Cage, the actor is also known for his consistent issuance of warnings. Warnings about how the biggest names in the industry all seem to be working with an agenda to have everyone under their control. While this mass control was initially targeted at the entertainers in the world, Dwayne Johnson's recent moves have just made it clear that it goes far beyond that. It seems the new agenda might involve getting the entire population under these elites. Seems a little sinister, doesn't it? Well, this definitely isn't the first time something like this is happening, as only a couple of years ago, it was Kanye trying to fill big shoes to get the elites into the powerhouse of the country. The angle The Rock seems to be taking, however, seems to be one that hasn't been threaded by many entertainers, which seems to be why it triggered Cube enough to feel the need to warn people about it. You take one look at Dwayne Johnson, you see a real upstanding guy. In fact, to some, he's the last person you'd think to be worried about in the industry, especially when there are several other celebrities just as successful as him that have been caught up in the worst scandals. Johnson, however, has managed to evade virtually every scandal you'd expect of someone who made the smoothest transition from one field to the next in the industry. But according to Ice Cube, it's these very characteristics that make Johnson one of the most dangerous one of the elites to make his way to the pinnacle of the free world. Of course, not only is he most people's favorite actor, but even before he became a full-time actor, Johnson was already most people's favorite athlete. Seems like the love was organic, and maybe it even is for some people. But for a large portion of others, liking Johnson as much as they do didn't exactly come in the most natural way. This is why Ice Cube is taking the time to warn the world about the changes that could come if the actor is allowed to make his way to the top by the people. Cube's warnings have been met with several different reactions from the fans, with some thinking he's reading too deep into it, and others saying they already saw it coming from a mile away. I'm not exactly here to tell you what to believe, but I have a feeling that at the end of this video, you'll know exactly where to stand. Go ahead. Huh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Rock, thank you so much. It's good to see Appreciate you, man. Good to First, he was a wrestler, then he became one of the biggest names, and even what some would describe as a pioneer in the field. But then he shocked the world when he moved into an even more competitive field, and still dominated it. And yes, I'm referring to the film industry, as he's had some of the highest grossing movies with his name at the forefront. These days, he seems to be exploring yet another field, as rumors of The Rock possibly running for president have engulfed the news in recent times. Well, the rumors didn't come from nowhere. They started after headlines started to read that Dwayne The Rock Johnson had revealed that multiple political parties had approached him last year to see if he would run for U.S. president, after a poll revealed 46% of Americans would support his campaign. That's right, recently Johnson spoke about the requests and suggestions he's gotten over the years to run for president. He actually corrected himself mid-sentence on Joe Rogan to confirm he does not support President Joe Biden in any way. About three weeks ago, Johnson helped comedian Trevor Noah kick off his new podcast on Spotify. It is called What Now? with Trevor Noah, and he has a wide variety of guests already. Appearing as the first guest on Trevor Noah's podcast, the actor and former WWE wrestler said a 2021 poll of 30,000 American adults led to the parties contacting him to ask if he was interested in running at the end of 2022. That was an interesting poll that happened, and I was really moved by that, Johnson said. I was really blown away, and I was really honored. I'll share this little bit with you. At the end of the year in 2022, I got a 
visit from the parties asking me if I was going to run and if I could run. It was a big deal, and it came out of the blue, he added. It was one after the other, and they brought up that poll, and they also brought up their own deep dive research that would prove that should I ever go down that road, I'd be a real contender. It was all very surreal because that's never been my goal. My goal has never been to be in politics. As a matter of fact, there's a lot about politics that I hate. However, Johnson, who has described himself as a centrist and political independent and publicly endorsed U.S. President Joe Biden's 2020 campaign, has openly shared his interest in running in the past. In 2016, he told GQ, I can't deny that the thought of being governor, the thought of being president is alluring. A year later, he told Variety the 2024 presidential campaign was a realistic consideration. His sitcom Young Rock even hinges around him running for U.S. president in 2032, with Johnson playing his future self as he gives interviews about moments in his early life that structure every episode. Responding to the aforementioned poll in 2021, Johnson wrote on Instagram, I don't think our founding fathers ever envisioned a 6'4", bald, tattooed, half-black, half-Samoan, tequila-drinking, pickup-truck-driving, fanny-pack-wearing guy joining their club, but if it ever happens, it'd be my honor to serve you, the people. While the thought of having a president who could actually beat up almost anyone that crosses his path sounds thrilling to a lot of people, Ice Cube has revealed that it might not exactly be the flex people think it is. In fact, the rapper cum actor seems to believe the public image Johnson has out there is nothing but a front to just delude people into putting him in office, as he just might be one of the elites Cube has spent the last year warning us about. You see, in the process of bringing this agenda by the elites to the world's attention only a couple of months ago, he delved into the the dark world of the prison industrial complex. Oh yes, Ice Cube didn't hold back and connected the dots, revealing how the music labels are allegedly feeding people to these profit-driven prisons. It's like an actual scandal of epic proportions, right? But that's not all. In a recent episode of comedian Bill Maher's podcast, the rapper spilled some seriously shady tea about the music industry's influence on society. The episode, called Club Random, was a wild ride filled with gossip-worthy topics like fame, parenting, and a scandalous alleged connection between the prison industry and music. I don't know their names, Bill, but if you follow the money, you go high enough, you start to see, okay, um, you know, this is an industry during the marathon hour and a half conversation, Maher couldn't help but dish about his concerns over the growing woke culture. He totally threw shade at it, comparing it to the catty drama of the movie Mean Girls. According to Maher, these woke warriors are always on the lookout for flaws in others, creating a toxic atmosphere of constant fault finding. But hold up, because Ice Cube didn't hold back either. He dropped some major bombshells suggesting that all these petty arguments are purposely thrown at us by the powers that be to keep us distracted and divided. According to the rapper, they want us to focus on these insignificant issues instead of tackling the real problems that are tearing our society apart. It's just done to really keep us bickering and chasing these words, so they're not really getting to the root of the issues which are most of the time very common if we really go down to the root of it," Ice Cube said. He then argued argued that his experiences within the music industry allowed him to witness the puppet strings being pulled behind the scenes. According to him, it's all about power and control. Ice Cube seems to believe it's not about directly forcing artists to write specific lyrics, but about the record companies acting as covert guardrails to ensure certain songs make it to the airwaves while others are brutally suppressed. Ice Cube exposed the record label's tight grip on creative freedom, claiming they exercise significant control over albums. In some cases, he alleged, they go as far as micromanaging the creative process, manipulating artists to push a specific narrative. Record company guys sit around and tell the artists, this is hot, say that, do this. We're gonna have this guy write the lyrics. It's like a dark and twisted game of puppetry, where these industry power players pull the strings behind the scenes, shaping the music that reaches our ears. Imagine a world where influential figures within the music industry are pulling strings, not only to boost album sales, but to shape the behaviors and mindset of society at large. If Ice Cube's claims hold any truth, it's like stepping into a twisted dystopian novel, where the lines between art, manipulation, and control blur into a shady web of deceit. Speaking of deceit, 
Dwayne Johnson's name has been caught up in quite a few scandalous situations, along with other prominent figures. Remember a while back when Johnson and another media mogul were talking about their humanitarian assistance to the residents of Maui following the devastating wildfires that rocked the tiny island? Well, it led many to wonder how both stars are connected to this place, why they are going out of their way to help, and whether the help is genuine. So, yes, both are connected to Hawaii, though in different capacities. Dwayne is a native of the land, so he he says, I was raised in these islands. My family are buried uh, in these islands. As for the other mogul, she is a massive, massive landowner on the island. Billion has purchased 870 acres of land on the Hawaiian island of Maui. The media mogul shelled out just $6.6 .6 million for the agricultural land in the Kula Up country. So there you have your connection. But as it turns out, the fun the two Hollywood stars set up purporting to be geared towards helping fire victims is nothing but a scam. At least that's what thousands of fans think. The two copped a backlash after asking people to donate to their fundraiser to help those affected by the Maui fires. In August, a deadly wildfire burned through thousands of acres of land, reportedly costing over 115 people. The pair launched a fund called the People's Fund of Maui, which aims to put the money directly in the pockets of locals affected. Oprah said she was inspired by Dolly Parton giving money to North Carolina fire victims. And I was sent a message about Dolly Parton's fund that she started for the people of Gatlinburg when there was a tragedy. We were so concerned about what was happening in Maui that we were texting back and forth. And I read this article that Dolly had given money to her community. And I said, I think this is the answer the media mogul said in a video posted on social media. And so, we have created the People's Fund of Maui that will put money directly in the hands of people who need it right now. So, if you send a donation, that money is going to go to one of many residents who have been displaced in Maui. Dwayne Johnson, who appeared in the video and posted it to his TikTok, said the fund was a way to help people who have trust issues with charity organizations. I know a lot of people out there, as Oprah and I have been finding, are just uh, having a hard time trusting where the money goes, what organization should I send money to, how can I help? Johnson, along with the other mogul, then started the fund by donating $10 million, but has been dragged online, with many stating that this was the latest example of rich people failing to read the room. The upload received more than 60,000 comments, many of which appeared opposed to the idea of wealthy celebrities appealing to regular working people to provide additional funds. Math ain't mathing with this one. You guys literally have so much money. You can donate it and make it back within a year, one top comment with over 10,000 likes read. Other fans felt infuriated, especially on Instagram, with one commenting, why can't you rebuild with your money? The nerve to ask. Another added, this is the most out of touch thing I've seen in my life. Sell your land to the people of Maui, seemingly addressing Oprah directly. Well, you can bet that Johnson will definitely not be getting these people's votes if he does decide to run. Well, them and a whole lot of other people thanks to Ice Cube. That's it for this video. Goodbye.